Last time we learned that in the course of the migration of the Turkish Oghuz people, new Turkish states were created not only in the west, but also in the east of Anatolia, where the so-called Turkmens ruled. Turkmen is another word for the Turks who had once been part of the Oghuz state on the Aral Sea. The ruling dynasty of the Ak Koyunlu, those with the white sheep, traced their ancestry back to Bayandar Khan, once mythical ruler of the Oghuz. But besides the Ak Koyunlu, another federation had formed, dwelling in the nearer vicinity and rising much faster to empire. The state of the Kara Koyunlu. These Turkmen, who traced their origins to the Yiva tribe, conquered cities like Mosul and Baghdad in the Middle East, large parts of the Caucasus in the north, and even parts of Iran to the east. They thus finally shook off the rule of the successors of Tamerlane, and established an empire that could even compete with the Ottomans in size and military might. But the Ak Koyunlu were already close on their heels. Just as with the Ak Koyunlu, the rise of the Kara Koyunlu was due to the collapse of the political power of the Mongol rulers. The collapse of the Il Khanid Empire, as we have already seen in the video on the Anatolian Beylix, led to the creation of numerous new states from western Anatolia to Iran. The Ak Koyunlu had gained their political independence around 1340, perhaps earlier. At about the same time, the Kara Koyunlu, in Turkish those with the black sheep, also established themselves as an independent state. This state was composed of several tribes, which in turn were all of Oga's origin. At the top was the Baharla family, which was a branch of the Yiva. Other tribes were the Daharlu and Agasari. These tribes were mentioned, among others, in the chronicles of Michael Panaritos, a scholar who worked as an official in the Empire of Trebizond in the 14th century. The Yiva tribe has been one of the 24 tribes of the Oghuz state. However, it must be emphasized again that from this Oghuz tribe emerged an empire as powerful as that of the Kara Koyunlu. Interestingly, the Yiva were once part of the same caste as the Kinnik, rulers of the Seljuk Empire. Just like many Oghuz Turks, the Yiva had settled widely in the Turkey-Syria Iraq and Iran border area. The branching off of the Baharlu, who led the Kara Koyunlu state, first appears in the chronicles of history in the middle of the 14th century. Accordingly, the Baharlu Turks lived in an area between Baghdad and Tabriz, that is, in present-day Iraq and Iran. As mostly Muslim Turks, they continued to maintain their ancient Oghuz traditions even as inhabitants of this region. But they were politically dependent on the Sultanate of the Jalarids, Mongols from Transoxania, who had internalized Persian culture and ruled the former Ilkhanid territory from Baghdad. The Sultan, named Sheikh Uwais Jalir, conquered Azerbaijan, the former heartland of the Ilkhans. The Baharla served theirs as vassals in the process. Kara Muhammad Tormish was Bey of Baharlu at that time, and helped the Sheikh to suppress rebellions in Jalir's realm. But relations between vassal and liege deteriorated in the 1360s. As a result, Tormish, together with Bayram Hoka, conquered the cities of Mush, Mosul Ursus and Van. But the Sultan struck back with ferocity. The Baharlu, who had led their Kara Koyunla state to independence for a short time, once again became vassals of the Jalarids. For several years, the Kara Koyunla had to submit to the Mongols. But in the election of a new leader of the Baharla family, a young man prevailed who was to become the leading figure of all Turkmen. Kara Yusuf Kara Yusuf ascended the throne of the Kara Koyunlu in 1389, the same year that Kara Udman became the leader of the Ak Koyunlu in the neighborhood. The relationship between Yusuf and Udman would become decisive for the course of the borders between those with the white sheep and those with the black sheep. For now, Yusuf, described in the sources as energetic, remained a well-behaved vassal of the Jalayirids. At the same time, he entered into a short-lived alliance with the Ak Koyunla to destroy Pir Hassan, a pretender to the throne of the Baharla family, as well as his loyalists. But only a short time later, 
Kara Yusuf turned back to the Jalayirids. He took advantage of the good relationship with his liege lords to launch a joint attack on the Ak Koyunlu. The supposed blitzkrieg of the Kara Koyunlu went wrong, because Kara Udman managed to defeat the enemy armies on the one hand, and even captured Yusuf at Sushari in Shiva's on the other. At that time, Shiva's was firmly in the hands of the Emirate of Erzinkan. Its Emir Mutahartan allowed Udman to carry out his expedition against the Kara Koyanla refugees through his territory, so that Udman could eventually capture Yusuf in central Anatolia. The Baharla leader was now in the catacombs of Bayandar. Tatar Hatton, Yusuf's aunt, then sent a significant amount of money to Udman asking for her nephew's release. Udman, perhaps out of good nature rather than greed, agreed. While Kara Yusuf was being taken home, Udman's older brothers all commanders in the Ak Koyunla army swooped down and imprisoned him. Suddenly, the lord of the Ak Koyunla himself found himself in captivity, in what is now Bengal province. This imprisonment, however, was more of a house arrest, probably as punishment for Udman releasing their rival. And indeed, this act turned out to be a huge mistake. For only a short time later, Yusuf took up arms again and, with the support of Turkish militia from Mosul, attacked the Ak Koyunla once more. This time he was able to decisively defeat the Ak Koyunla near Mardin. Udman was released from house arrest and was now to repay his mistake by repelling Yusuf's attack. In the third battle between Kara Koyunlu and Ak Koyunlu, Udman's forces were indeed superior, and Yusuf again suffered defeat. This time the number of casualties was so high that the Kara Koyunlu had to make a forced peace with their rivals while still on the battlefield. All this had taken place in a period between 1389 and 1392. Already within the first three years of their reign, Udman and Yusuf had vigorously pursued several disputes. They were so preoccupied with their respective neighbors and rivals that they hardly noticed the political developments in the East. For in 1393 to more length, Timur Ibn Teragai Barlas, Amir and warlord from Samarkand, appeared at the gates of Baghdad. Timur was already notorious for his violent campaigns of conquest and massacres of civilians in the conquered territories. The Turko-Mongol ruler had annexed all of Central Asia within two decades and had advanced as far as Shiraz in southern Persia. To the horror of all the local princes and the surrounding population, Timur advanced from Shiraz to Baghdad within eight days. The Jalayirid Sultan was forced to flee to Syria, and Timur was able to expand his rule in the Middle East. While he turned back to the east and advanced as far as Delhi in India, Kara Yusuf also had to flee and found protection with the Ottomans. Bayezid I granted him and his family asylum. When Timur returned in 1402 and advanced to Anatolia, the Ottomans went against him in the Battle of Ankara. As is known, Timur's warriors decisively defeated the Ottoman army. Timur captured Bayezid, and a dark period of anarchy broke out in the Ottoman Empire. This interregnum, in turn, caused the Ottoman central authority to crumble. And thus many former Baliks regained their independence thanks to Timur. Even during the battle, the Sipahis, descended from the Baliks, had switched to Timur's side. In addition, the Turkmen had also participated, the Kara Koyunlu of Yusuf on the side of Bayazid, and the Ak Koyunlu of Udman on the side of Timur. As a result of the battle, and in gratitude for the support, Timur awarded valuable land in eastern Anatolia to the Ak Koyunlu. Kara Yusuf returned to Mesopotamia, and faced the invaders in the Battle of Algamai Canal. However, Timur's deputy Muran Shah retained the upper hand. For Kara Yusuf, this defeat, like the Battle of Ankara for the Ottomans, was a disaster. The Kara Koyanla had put their rule on the line and lost a second time in the battle against Timur. Yusuf had to flee to Egypt and was immediately captured by the Maluk Sultan fearing Timur's reaction. But this was not the end of the Baharla dynasty. For although it may have sounded like a reverie at the time, Yusuf planned an exile to restore his rule once again. 
After Timur's death in 1405, the Ak Koyunlu entered a period of internal torment. Yusuf seized the opportunity and returned to Baghdad once again with the Jalarid Sultan Ahmed. While Sultan Ahmed was able to reconquer Baghdad, Yusuf migrated to Anatolia. There he organized a reasonably strong army among the local Turkmen and gradually conquered settlements along Lake Van, the old home of his Baharla family. He even managed to capture Timur's governor for the region, Altimus. In 1406, Yusuf's army invaded Azerbaijan. At the Battle of Nakhchivan on October 14, Yusuf scored a coup against the Timurids. He was able to stop the attempt of the Timurids Abu Bakr and Miran Shah to reconquer Azerbaijan. At the Battle of Sardrud, Yusuf destroyed Miran Shah's army and had him killed. In historiography, the victory of Kara Koyanlu at Sardrud is considered decisive for the Timurid retreat from the Middle East. In the years that followed, the Kara Koyanlu continued to expand southward. Yusuf conquered Tabriz and made it his capital. In doing so, he had the inhabitants from the Caucasus move into the city to fill it with new life and probably with loyal Turkmen. He advanced as far as Shiraz. In the west, he bypassed the Ak Koyanlu and helped to overthrow Sali Sahabeddin Ahmed, a bey of the Artukids, thus dealing a death blow to that Beylik. As a last great move, he turned against his old ally Sultan Ahmed of the Jalagirids, defeating him on August 30, 1410, after the latter had tried to conquer Tabriz. Ahmed was forced to abdicate, and Yusuf's son Shah Muhammad was declared the new rightful Sultan of the Jalagirids. However, this behaved as it once did between the Seljuks and the Abbasid Caliphate. Although Shah Muhammad was proclaimed Sultan over Baghdad, behind the scenes Yusuf acted as the actual ruler over the area. The Kara Koyanla had reached their premature zenith in power politics. This was not only evident in Yusuf's conquests in the Middle East. In the West, he was finally able to assert himself against Kara Udman and the Ak Koyanlu in two smaller battles. When Shirvancha, a state northeast of Azerbaijan, had come into distress against the Timurids, Yusuf set his sights on attacking them. He allied himself with your Ahmed Karamanli, the former ally of the Servancha, and also threw himself into battle against the Georgians. The latter's king Constantine had sided with Shirvancha. In December 1412, the Kara Koyanla defeated the enemy army at Kalagan. Afterwards, Kara Yusuf had 300 Georgian officers executed in the field, and also the Georgian King Constantine, who had taken part in the battle. Executions of political opponents were nothing special in antiquity and in the Middle Ages, but often the princes of that time left it at a mere capture. But unlike Kara Udman, who had captured and released Yusuf, Yusuf dispensed with any bureaucracy and let violence speak for itself. In general, the reign of Kara Yusuf is described as violent. And as we have now seen, his political career was indeed marked by many violent events. The capture and humiliation by Kara Udman, the expulsion from Baghdad by Timur, then the defeat at Ankara, and exile in prison in Egypt. By the time the Kara Koyanla were able to retake their heartland at Van, Yusuf had spent his entire life either on the battlefield, in prison, or on the run. This, along with the numerous territorial losses, possibly reinforced his penchant for authoritarian rule. Kara Yusuf died during the campaign against Sharuk in October 1420. According to a letter sent by Ahmad Faridin Bey, Yusuf's treasury was looted without hesitation by his nephew. Yusuf was replaced by his son Iskender, who also clashed with the Ak Koyanlu. Despite all their differences, the Ak and Kara Koyanla had one very special thing in common, they were both related to the House of the Komnenes from the Empire of Trebizond, and Yusuf's children had a Pontic princess for a mother. Perhaps Tur Ali and Muhammad, Kara Udman and Kara Yusuf had not been aware of it at the time. But the marriage policy with the Turkmen, which had begun under Alexios III, was not only aimed at securing the peace treaties between Trebizond and its Turkish neighbors. Apart from the cultural exchange between Pontic Anatolian and Turkmen Asian traditions and norms, the constant betrothals of Pontic princesses to Turkmen kings produced an alliance that had been primarily in the interests of the Komnen dynasty. 
For while at Koyunlo, Kara Koyunlo and Timur's heirs had been fighting over the land between Anatolia and Iran, a new danger was rising from the west. A state that had recovered half a century after Timur's humiliation was stronger than ever. The time of the Ottomans had come. But at the same time that Mehmet II conquered Constantinople, new men ascended the thrones of both the white mutton Turkmen and the black mutton Turkmen. Men who were intelligent and educated, and who wanted to face the dangers from the east and the west with all their might. But would they succeed in restoring the glory of their kingdoms? Could they maintain the glory of their family? Or did their rise mean the collapse of their dynasties? Only time will tell who was right and who was wrong. <laughs>